Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode with me, Dr. Clement Asemiura, right here on Fashion Ecore. In today's video, we are going to learn how to pad the hips in garment construction. Fashion is all about illusion and as a designer, your ability to know how to accentuate the pleasant part of your client's body is very, very important. You equally have to know how to camouflage some part of their body that shouldn't be seen. And this video is going to be very helpful if you have clients who have very um, smaller hip, hips that you really want to um, create that kind of hourglass figure. This video is for you. So welcome on board. We are going to have fun as we learn. Let's get into it after this break. So here are some few tips to take note when you want to pad the hip and I want to make it more practicable so I have my TLM teaching learning material in the form of my dummy this is my life um, human mannequin so before you try creating the pattern for your client it's very important to understand the broader circumference where exactly you want the pattern because we have people who naturally have their hips dropped. We have people who naturally have their hips at the broader circumference. So you need to know exactly where you want to do the pattern. So this is my life model. I'm going to measure if this, um, I'm making a skirt for her. So I'm going to measure where I want the skirt to start from. So at this point, I'm going to measure two where I have identified needs the enhancement. So looking at this, I'm going to do my enhancement at eight and a half inches. Eight and a half inches. If you have a client who have a drop hip, you may even move to 10 and a half or 11. So you have to be very sure of the measurement. Have the client measure them to have the exact area where you have to do the padding effect. So I'm going to use eight and a half for her, which is very, very essential. And you equally have to note that when shipping the garment, you don't have to use the person's exact hip measurement. You are supposed to add some tolerance or you are supposed to add onto the measurement to accommodate the pattern you're going to introduce into the garment. It's very, very essential. You equally have to note when padding the hip, that we have three methods of introducing lining into garment. We have the full lining, hanging lining, and the backing lining. When you want to part a garment, it's highly recommended to either use the full lining method or the hanging lining method. We want to introduce the padding effect between the lining and the fashion fabric. If you are using the backing effect, it means you end up introducing the pattern directly on the lining and when the wearer or your client wears or fits the garment, the pattern is going to be on their skin, which is wrong. But rather, you are supposed to hide the pattern between the fashion fabric and the lining. Let's move into it, talking about essentials needed for our work. So I'm going to use a skirt. You can either work with a dress or a skirt for the purposes of our lesson. I'm using a skirt. And if you look at this skirt, this skirt is uh, partially constructed. This is the fashion fabric and this is the lining. I didn't add the lining to the fashion fabric. Rather, I separated the lining from the fashion fabric. In this, I'll be able to attach my pattern on the lining before bringing it into the fashion fabric. You can equally do this on a dress. I'm not saying we equally part just on a skirt. And you will need your pattern. I'm going to use the felt. That's us. the shoulder pad felt. It comes in different colors. We have the white. We have the ash color as well. Um, you can use foam, but I 
I highly recommend the felt because the felt have a natural way the edges have been tapered which lies very smooth on the skin you can see when I put this here it lies smooth but if you are using the foam it means you would have to find a way to dampen or trim the edges so that it doesn't look bulky or or create a bulky outline in the garment so kindly note that so we are going to use our felt and we'll need a piece of fabric we are going to cut a circular base on the circular base we are going to build our pattern like this so this is a circular base and the pattern was built on it so you you're going to build the pattern based on um, how you want it you de you determine as the designer so first let's cut our circular we are going to use a basic measurement of six inches So I'm cutting all folds together, meaning I'm going to have both sides all ready at once. So we are going to build our felt onto the circular. And it's very important to start with our felt. And we are going to use an adhesive. For our first building, we are going to use fusible web or hem and gum. So you first pick your first two sets together. And in positioning it, you will make sure that tips overlap each other and the center meeting exactly in the middle. This is my fusible web. So I'm going to lay the fusible web right onto the felt. So I have my fusible web all laid or well laid making sure both edges are overlapping with the middle meeting each other and i'll bring my circular and we'll need steam so with the help of our steam our fusible web is going to melt holding the fashion fabric or the lining to our felt fully so we have this as our first base now we move on to building based on the recommendation we need at this stage we are going to use our fabric glue we have different types of glue so you decide on the glue you want I'm going to lay bits of the glue on the felt then I lay you pick another pair lay it onto the first pair So I have two pairs. I still need an extra pair because I want to create a more um, beautiful shape. So I'll add my next pair to it. We lay it. So I have my work fully set. Once you are done, you observe there is a cut at the middle. With the help of the glue, let's try to baste both sides with the glue. Then we can put it together like this. Now let's bring it back to our ironing table. And with the help of the steam, let's steam our pad.
now we have our parts ready we have our two parts ready for our padding exercise moving straight to our work this is the skirt I have so like I said I have separated the lining from the fashion fabric and at the center back line I have just closed this place with gathering stitches because I need to open to be more comfortable to fix the pattern in before closing it so what I'm going to do now is to identify the area where I'm going to pad and like I did earlier on I measured my client and I had eight and a half inches so I'm going to measure the eight and a half inches on the lining I'm going to mark at both sides I'll fold on that exact line and create a crease line now I can unpick my seam for the purposes of fixing the pad So this is the hip pad and we have our line here. Now we are going to attach our pattern to the area where we want to enhance. And in positioning this, I'm going to make sure this part touches the wrong side of the lining. This part touches the wrong side of the lining whilst having this part out. And in order to position it, I have to position the middle of this frame. So in order to get the middle, you equally have to measure. I have 12 inches divided by 2 is 6. So this is my 6 line. So I'm going to pin that point to my crease line. In pinning, don't forget the hip is contoured or bold. So you need to stretch the lining very well so that you don't have any foldings beneath it. So you stretch at both sides. Make sure you stretch all around the circumference. So this is it. We can now see what we have. There is no folding here because I stretched very well. You do the same thing to the other side. You measure the pad into two, identify the middle, making sure the wrong side of the pad touches the wrong side of the lining.
Now we have the work set. We are going to stitch in a circular motion or stitch all round just to have the hip part fused or attached to the lining. Okay, now that I have both paddings fixed, I'll move on to close the, the center back line. I'll close the center back line, leaving the zipper extension area. Now we have both pad fixed onto the lining. With the help of our steam, we are going to flatten the side a bit just to create a crease line to run with the original line. Now we can push in the lining so that we could have the fashion fabric showing outside. Don't forget, the lining is separated from the fashion fabric and it's very important, we try as much as possible to match the fashion fabric seam to that of the lining seam and tuck it. In tucking it, you are holding the fashion fabric firmly so that it doesn't shift off the position of the pattern. You do that for both sides. Then we could go ahead, fix our zipper, and get our life model try this. So let's see how those look on her. Meet my life model looking dashing in her padded skirt. And this is obviously boosting her confidence. Do whatever makes you happy once it doesn't hurt anyone. Rock the world, girl. I'm super sure you had fun watching me on this episode. Go try this technique and give me feedback. You can equally let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comment section. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video with everyone who may find this video very, very important. And don't forget, if you're watching me for the first time, subscribe to my channel fashion ecore also click on the notification bell icon get notified anytime i upload a video right here on this channel my name is dr clement asem Inura. follow me on instagram by at dr clement asem Inura and fashion masterclass africa let's have fun and see you in the next video Music.